Stop. You can't go outside. I've been driven insane by this movie. This movie has driven me insane. This movie is so fucked up in everything that it tries to do that it, it's almost good. I cannot tell what's intentionally poignant and what has gone so far around that it almost makes sense again. The movie Pixel Perfect came out in 2004 on Disney Channel. On the surface, it's about a boy whose best friend is in a band and they're told they need a different lead singer, so he makes a hologram to be their lead singer. From that point forward, the main conflict is, is this hologram a person? All of the supporting characters are asking this question and the hologram is asking this question repeatedly. It's a children's movie. It's not fair you made me like this. He should have made me real. The moment you start talking about this movie, there is a million different directions you can go at once. So I'm just sort of going to try to knock the really obvious ones out because I think they're less interesting, but they're funny. Number one, the dancing is insane. There are certain things that I don't consider dancing that this movie does. Um, Backflips, just being really flexible. Then there's the character that should have been the protagonist, which is the main character, Roscoe's best friend, Sam, who's the lead singer who's kind of being replaced and pushed to just play the guitar. She writes all the songs and everything. She's clearly an Avril Lavigne knockoff to the point where they legitimately plagiarize. She's the one dealing with like, I'm being replaced. She's in to Roscoe. So that's obviously happening. It's a Disney Channel movie, you know what I mean? Two friends like each other. What do you think will happen at the end of this movie? If you said that you think that she would come out of a coma with multiple personalities inside of her and get struck by lightning, you're correct. See, I can't talk about the part that I want to talk about. It's like so hard because you have to dig through all this other shit. There is the crazy relationship between the two of them in which... Roscoe sort of doesn't show interest, but they're both flirty all the time. Like, they're flirty in the same way like two 30-year-olds would be flirty, but they're supposed to be 16. I don't know who wrote this, but it's a mess. Are you gonna go to the dance on Saturday? Well, that depends. Are you asking me? And then there's the hologram, and I'll, I'll talk about her as a person in a second, but just to quickly give an overview of her technology it's that there's a program you can make holograms in. There's no hard copy saved anywhere. So if they do go outside. How many times do I have to tell you? You have to stay away from windows and doors that lead outside. They're like dead forever. Like they have to be recoded completely manually, like from the beginning. So it's death. And then they're sentient. Like the moment they come into existence, they're sentient. And we know that because there's a cat that they use to talk about that going outside kills you in the very first part of the movie. But the other thing, the sentience, is that the first thing this cat wants to do is go outside. And literally the same thing happens to Loretta Modern. The thing about the technology that I find craziest is that um, they come with like a programmed need to experience new things. And they become quickly bitter by not being able to access new information, like being outside. I don't know. It only happens outside. They become rebellious like children. I want to go to the mall. You can't. The mall's closed. Which plays into the main thing that I want to talk about. <laughs> so I want to talk about what keeps plaguing me the worst part of this movie, which is Ricky Ullman's character, the main character, Roscoe. He is literally a sociopath. I can't feel anything. It's okay. Me neither. They seem to imply that it's born out of a sort of broken relationship with his father. A holographic rock star isn't exactly what I had in mind. Yeah, I'm a star. They do a really bad job, in my opinion, of presenting the father as being especially bad. Like, there's this. So how are things in your part of the world? All right, I guess. Ship them off to China. 
What? Overnight, every last one of them. I mean, they, they need the technology. We've got a surplus. It's a match made in heaven. Thanks for the help. Hi, I'm editing and just had to drop in to explain what the fuck is happening. Basically, he thinks he's talking to his dad at dinner, but his dad is on the phone the whole time. So it almost sounds like he's saying the right things, but he's not because he's on a conference call. <laughs> Which is super funny because that headset is gigantic. So you have to be like talking to your son like this, like the whole time, like, oh, blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah, dude, he's not talking to you. He's not making eye contact. He's looking this direction. And then there's like his dad's super high expectations for him. But she's a good beginning. And now let's just move beyond it. Really showing their relationship is only meant to give us a model and to give Roscoe a model for parenting. There's always room for improvement. You said I was perfect. Even perfection has its limits. So, when he makes a hologram, um, who's essentially meant to be his dream girl, like... You designed her to be your perfect girl. One component in which he's a sociopath is the way that he makes her, even. He finds, like, the average of, like, all these, like, hot girls and, like, includes his own best friend. And there's post-it notes. It's weird. It's spooky. It specifically hurts Sam's feelings. I just want to know what part of me you used to make her. What part of me did you like enough to keep? So he does that to create a girl. And then he has a, a dual relationship with her that I take huge issue with. In a children's movie, this is just so weird. Can we do this every day? He has moments where he's essentially like emotionally abusive to her as a father. Fine. Then just reprogram me to not argue. Maybe I will. Or they get into a fight um, or an argument and he's like definitely a dad. How would you know? You know what? I'm not gonna have this argument. He's definitely being a dad. There's like no comparison and he's definitely being his own dad specifically. But he's also in her. How do I look? Is my contrast set right? You look great. Perfect. Like, he's also kind of in love with the hologram that he sees himself as a parent to. And it's almost like that's the only reason he thinks she's a person. Why can't you just appreciate what you've got right in front of you? I mean, you saw her, but did you see who she is, who, who she's becoming? Which is the ongoing philosophical debate of this movie. No joke, whether or not a hologram's a person. And his sounds good on the surface? No, she's an individual. Uh, she has thoughts and feelings, just like you and me. Like, I agree with that thought. Thoughts, feelings, yeah, you're good. Sentience, person, right? It's almost like the reason that he thinks she's real is because those thoughts and feelings are about him. No more tinkering with your programs, all right? I'm already everything I wanted you to be. What about what I want to be? Because of the boundary set up by the technology that you can't go outside and his belief that she can't go online, which proves untrue. Downloading from that is much different than uploading. There are scenes in which she is having such an existential meltdown about the boundaries that like she threatens to kill herself. I'm leaving. If you step out that door, you'll be gone forever. Is that what you want? So, you know, I, I don't know, I don't know, and I don't know why they want to go outside, but I could go off about that forever. I can't tell you how many times I've lost the cat. He does a lot of really, really weird things, though. The way that he responds to situations is very, very weird. Sometimes it seems nice, like when he's trying to comfort his best friend. Look, you write awesome songs. Maybe it's just time you let someone else sing them that he's definitely into or potentially not into. I have no idea. The conversation with his dad where his dad's on the phone sort of doesn't help. Sam and I are just friends. So what's the problem? I don't know. I mean, she's fun to be with. But she can get so moody. She's talented. She can be so stubborn. I like her, but... You see, that's the problem. How do you get past all those bumps? He's talking about it as if he's certain Sam is into him, 
and he thinks she's like cute but he sort of feels like it's not worth the effort and the trouble like it would just create a lot of trouble for him and he's just like whatever it's weird because knowing she's into you he sort of responds to things in a way that indicate he's like trying to get her to make her nervous or anxious about her secret crush on him that or he's completely oblivious both of which are nuts like are you gonna go to the dance on saturday well that depends are you asking me what's the point in asking if you're gonna be on stage the whole time or this i was thinking maybe we could go out for dinner on, on saturday i'd really like that rascal wait a second you can't well, i made a deal with him and loretta can't be there without me she's just repeatedly getting excited by these moments and then he's like swerving. He's just trying to get a rise out of her. And that feeling that like your heart starts beating and you're like, oh my God, he's finally asking me out. And then he's like, fuck you, no. It's just really weird to put on someone else if you also have a crush on them. Like, I, I don't believe he actually has a crush on her or else he'd see her being like, yeah, I, I would love to date you. And he's just not do dealing with it right now. Which I find really weird because he's obviously interested in having some kind of relationship to a girl because he's like hitting on the hologram and he's got like a crush on the hologram that he doesn't have with Sam. I don't know what I would have done if I lost you. I mean, if the man lost you. Like, he acts around Loretta the way that Sam acts around him. Is this right? Yeah. But he does he does things to his father that are weird. This scene is one of my favorite scenes of all time. I don't know why he's acting like this. I don't know. It's so weird and spooky. Do you uh remember the last thing Susan said to you? What? He's so genuinely terrified by his own son. Like who said that? Your last girlfriend. Well, I haven't thought about her in ages. Okay. You had a girlfriend that lived in your house with you and your son. And your son says her name in reference to, like, do you remember the thing that she said to you? And he's like, who? Like, your girlfriend. Like, what do you mean, who? You literally, like, forgot that you knew anyone named Susan, much less dated them? She said... I hope you like eating alone. <laughs> I want to like applaud Ricky Ullman genuinely because I think his acting is solid enough that it makes the scene work. But either the directing or the writing is off or he's truly supposed to be a sociopath. He's, <laughs> he's being a Bond villain. Um, then she slammed the door. She was very good at slamming doors huge applause to Susan I hope you like eating dinner alone is a hardcore last thing to say to the boyfriend you lived with like to a serious boyfriend holy shit so uh, you like eating alone how's it working out for you I'm not alone I've got you my business partner a completely normal thing to refer to your son as mom slam doors too He's now getting into a really weird point that he's trying to make to his dad that I don't understand how he came to realize. You'll see what I mean because the conversation flips. I don't understand. Okay. I'm just wondering why you never got married again. Definitely like purposefully saying things in a hurtful way, which is weird. Like his dad is so confused by this. <laughs> why, are you, why are we talking about Susan? Like what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I guess I was looking for something that I never quite found. Perfection? I always believed in the perfect match, that there was someone out there who'd be exactly what I needed, and we would sort of complete each other. But you never found her. So, I guess one of the morals of this movie is, like, only for men like this, like, only for men who see women as objects. The point is that they're not objects, so don't treat them like they can be perfect because they're not objects. There's never any self-reflection on like, 
don't insist they're perfect because you're not perfect. You kind of suck. Like you're the worst, honestly, or something like that. There's not really growth other than like, I realized that I can't ask this much of the women in my life, regardless of whether or not I created them from thin air, like God himself. And it seems that Roscoe comes downstairs to make this point to his dad, but his dad pulls a very weird move here that completely catches me off guard. Perfection's a funny thing. I mean, look how perfect this is. What is that? What does that mean? Like, uh-oh, is he talking about me now? Like, yeah, no sh- Like, what? He almost looks like he's disagreeing with him. Like, he's like, Psh, yeah, it is. But, but then why, well, then what speech was he trying to make? The way the crystal captures the light, and refracts it into beautiful patterns. Silicon's amazing, isn't it? You can mold it into glass or computer chips. But you know what? It's not alive. An excellent point. And the more you try to... He freezes! Like, he didn't see this coming! Like, that wasn't the point! Did the dad already think of this and realize this, and he just had this up his sleeve? He's saying, the reason that I never, I've never really dated following Susan is because the women haven't been perfect enough. But then he says something that indicates, like, and honestly, I'm being ridiculous for expecting that from them. Like, did you realize that before just now? Because if you didn't, then, like, way to turn this on your son really fast. He, like, huge props, but... If you already knew this, like, why aren't you dating some imperfect women? And the more you try to find that kind of perfection in people, the more meals you will eat alone. Did Ricky Ullman just get the lecture he was going to give? I would be so mad if I came downstairs to completely roast my dad and then he roasted me for the same thing. Why doesn't he realize that he's doing the same thing to Loretta? I cannot believe... In this movie, a dad goes like, we, us, you and me, kid, me and my business partner right here, we suck. We're like the worst men on the planet. We expect way too much from women. Like we're treating them like they're pieces of technology that we can just change. But it turns out, son, that if you do find a woman that you can change to make perfect for you, you can't also fuck her, which is a real pain in the ass. At this point, you may be thinking... That scene proves he's not a sociopath. But then there's... The part where he actually says that he is. Basically, Loretta is coming to a point where she's completely losing it because she so wants to be a person and specifically cannot be in, like, the most important ways. And one of the big ones is that, like, she wants to understand what physical contact with another person would feel like, which is really profound and dark and sad. Like, it makes me sad to watch this scene. Roscoe, what's it like to feel? So he gives her the weirdest description of it. For some reason, he believes she can only understand things in music metaphor. He touches your hair. It feels like, like a violin gently playing. A cello, harmonizing with the violin. At the end, when it doesn't work, she says... You feel that? Oh, I can't feel anything. And in response, he says this... Me neither. I guess you and I never will. What? What? Are you... What do you mean? The, this movie goes like, he can't feel things. I, maybe they mean her, her skin, maybe, but she's trying to say, like, I can't even imagine that scenario and how I would feel in it. And he's like, me neither. I can't imagine having, like, a close, intimate connection with someone. Which is so fucking bizarre. After that scene with his dad where they both lecture each other at the same time and both have an epiphany at the same time 
about people and about Loretta. Um, they've decided to completely redeem both of these characters forever. I guess. There's a whole record label situation, whatever. There's this guy. You don't have to pay them, you don't have to feed them. And when they're not on stage, you can put them away. That's the kind of performer I like. Who's clearly a villain. And if the point of the movie is to be like, Roscoe treats women like objects, thus he's bad. I don't know what this guy's doing here because he also does that, but like in a capitalist way, like it's about money, I guess that makes it worse. Then what is she? Property. And now she's my property. Like, Roscoe sees the women in his lives as, like, extensions of him. So, like, the better Loretta is, like, the better he looks. But producer, owner guy is bad because he's like, this'll make us money. That's, that's the difference, I guess. I don't, I guess that's worse. I don't know. This is a very weird fantasy. Roscoe, let's just step outside and talk calmly about yeah, this. Yeah, I know. Like business partners. But you know what? I'm not your business partner. I'm your son from someone whose dad was sort of like the dad in this movie. Yes, we can do all of that. Just because we can doesn't mean that we should. I'm sorry, but I'm with my son on this. Whether Loretta is a person or a program, she deserves to be treated with dignity. Still editing and having the absolute time of my life realizing that I didn't talk about the end of the movie. Like, I, I just stopped. Loretta goes into the internet. <laughs> In the meanwhile, Sam and the Zetabites, the band, have to perform without her. And so Sam decides she's going to pretend to be her. I guess she's been practicing dancing. And her mom will play the guitar, which is super cool because we do see a scene of her like absolutely shredding. But Sam, as I think I've previously discussed, cannot dance. But she's been practicing and she puts a wig on. She tries to dance and she tries to do a cartwheel. I don't know why Loretta doesn't do cartwheels. She does backflips in which she's suspended in midair, spinning endlessly. But she tries to do a cartwheel and this happens. like normal you know when you're doing a cartwheel and then you fall off a stage and then your wig falls off and then you're in a coma so <laughs> Loretta shows back up while she's in the coma and everyone's kind of mad at her because it's like she was trying to be you that's why she's in a coma but like honestly that's on Sam I don't but Loretta sees wires attached to her and sort of decides I know what I'll do me being a hologram i can travel through anything with wires these wires are going to her brain which i guess is technically a computer and now they're both in her brain they're both in there they have a conversation some of the lines are super poignant and kind of cutting specifically to roscoe you get to be the dreamer but all i'll ever be is the dream other bits of it is super cheesy just like she's trying to help her be not depressed by being like here's a guitar like i hate it but at some point they both start to get weird and they're like oh shit i don't think we can both be in here really at the same time so sam wakes up <laughs> and as you might have guessed she's being possessed by loretta where's samantha there was only room for one of us at a time now it's my turn to feel. So that Loretta can feel things. And to my, honestly, extreme confusion, she does not lead with, like, making contact with Ricky Oldman because she, she doesn't feel anything about him because she doesn't, I don't think, feel much about people in general. But she really wants to feel the rain. And it's raining, so it's actually, like, a really sick coincidence that she brought her out of this coma during a storm. Everyone is like, what the fuck? She's possessing her and she, it's weird. For a second, you really think like Sam isn't coming back. You let her come back? <laughs> of course I will. And then she spins around. So we've already established that holograms can travel through the internet. They can travel via brains, like brains count as internet. But they've sort of been skirting the idea that she's simply like an electrical signal, like one electrical signal. 
But then Stan's body gets struck by lightning and the spirit or the soul of Loretta flies out of her. Instead of Loretta just choosing like to kind of fade, like to just dissolve, she exists as a free-floating life form who, just before the end of the movie, because for some reason that's not the end, comes back and sings. Well, Rachel's harmonies helped me out. Harmony? I was the singing harmony. Not like in a body or anything. She just sings. Really just standard shit for a children's movie. They come to no conclusion, really, about whether or not she's a person. Are they saying that because she inhabits a real body here, that's what makes her a person? Because she's literally exactly the same. But I mean, right before this, the dad is like, maybe she's a person. Like, is she a person? Is she a person? What does it mean? What does this movie mean for children? You don't, like, this is an inception, okay? This is a movie for kids. Just to wrap this up, you know, I, I recorded this video like four times. Um, I fully made it, fully edited it, went to caption it and hated it, <laughs> redid it again. I don't care if anyone watches it because <laughs> I made my channel to talk about this movie period end of story like I all the other videos I've done have been built up to this like this is my like pièce de résistance like my masterpiece this is my like Sistine Chapel it's too long it's too much and I could have talked for three times as long every bit of this movie is crazy I've left so much out like you guys don't even know about defib I resigned from Hearthstone what I didn't like the air of oppression. Things I liked about this movie I left out because I could only talk about the things I hated. There's a band in it called Moist Towelette. So, I don't know. I love it. It's like, it's great fun. I guess watch it on Disney Plus. I'm sure they're gonna take this video the fuck down immediately because I guess they don't agree with fair use. Please watch this movie. It's stronger than several episodes of Black Mirror, and I really encourage you to just sit down and get wasted and watch this and just be confused with me. I would like to thank you so much for watching this absolutely chaotic mess of a video. I worked so hard on it, like I said, and if anyone else enjoys this, even one person, like I'm happy, I really think she's a person. Like, I think she's, like, cut and dry a person, like, from the get. I do, It takes, like, no character growth. She grows as a character more than most of everyone else. I cannot believe that you've wasted your time like this. But you wasted, like, half an hour watching this video. I wasted, like, 60 hours continuous work. <laughs> I watched this movie and took detailed notes. The notes that I took and the footnotes on them crashed my google docs like every 10 minutes and i had to make a new one so if there's anything in this movie that you want to see let me know because i have it i can make a video i can make two more videos about this no problem have a great day thank you for spending time with me i too am very lonely and uh if this is the last thing i ever do i will die happy I'm just trying to imagine pitching a movie and you're like, um, a boy like creates a person and she has an existential breakdown and the whole movie is about like, is she sentient life in like the Disney Channel boardroom?